don't know like when nigga be getting locked up and shit. I thank God want to get locked up. God don't want them niggas got like kids and shit, all kinds of bills and mamas and shit. <laughs> you already know you disrespect this BMG Fair America shit. What's gonna happen? Real young came from nothing. From the ground up. Look at us now. Hey man, you already know you're on the west end of Atlanta. A thousand Muslims, a thousand Kufas, a thousand choppers, man. Everybody else to the other gun, apparently. We still uh, still put money on the shit. Hot sick, hot sick, See the secret is, I ain't got security. These my brothers that wasn't armed security guard. It was armed found goons. In the words of Frankie. Baby, art shit, pop shit, you play with this shit. And I was the biggest drug dealer over there, so I had the best quality drugs, and I also had large quantity for a lower price. You know what I'm saying? Six, an Atlanta rapper accused tonight of leading a gang that was allegedly caught trying to move nearly $2 million worth of pot through Metro Atlanta. Fast forward to this past weekend, a complaint says a canine unit met Rollo's plane after it landed at PDK and found just under a million dollars. Hey yo squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. It's tough being a street rapper nowadays. It's all good being hidden from the public and moving kingpin size weight like El Chapo. But once that fame hits and the spotlight shines on you, you know the feds aren't far behind. Atlanta rapper Rollo got caught in the trap saying too much and showing too much. Eventually, he was caught lacking and just lost up to eight years of his freedom. So today, I'ma give you the life and times of the Atlanta Kingpin and what led him behind bars. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. Terrell Davis, known to the streets and rap community as Rollo, wanted to do good, but never knew what doing good meant. Coming up in West Atlanta in a neighborhood called The Bluff, it molded him into being somebody that was down for whatever, no matter what. I'm actually from a neighborhood called The Bluff. This area right here is the West End of Atlanta. It's kind of, um, this whole community is kind of like a mother community. Like, it's a lot of people that are homeless. I mean, The Bluff was a notorious trafficking area in America. Weight was moving like a narcotics gym, open 24-7. The Bluff was the heroin capital of the world. I mean, for, of America for approximately seven to eight years. Mm -hmm. It wasn't Planet Fitness, but it was Planet Get Bricks. But let me move on. Coming up, Rollo didn't have the easiest life. His pops was a kingpin running the streets of Atlanta. He was a kingpin. He had, he made a lot of money. And his mom's? Well, she was addicted to the illegal substances of life and was more about hood activities rather than raising her child the right way. And truth is, Rollo always wanted to go to school and graduate. He had dreams of being an electrician. Was like, I wanted to be an electrician. But his dad was never close to him up to when he had passed away, and his mom's even put him out when he just wanted some peace and quiet to focus on school. Like, I, want, I wanted to go to school. Like All my life, I wanted to graduate from school. It's just something that I personally had going on. And just to hear the music six, five, four o'clock in the morning, every morning, like can't get no rest. Cause at just 12 years old, Rollo was homeless, but thankfully for his homie in day one, young Scooter, he found a roof over his head. Yeah, I was homeless from the age of 12 to 14. I was homeless from seventh grade to the ninth grade. I was homeless. Eventually, that friendship would gain him the link with Future that changed his life when he got into the rap game. I said, man, Future got a lot of songs on the radio. I was like, tell him, give me a hook. <laughs> he was like, all right. He said he gonna charge you though, bro. Rollo's music was authentic and captured the streets. Once his pop passed, Rollo was the heir to the throne, serving the clientele and building an empire with his mans in them. All his clientele knew me as his son. So it was like, it almost chose you. And it, all, it just chose me. Because they was just waiting for me to get some dope to supply them with. If Rollo wanted you gone, you was gone. He had the backing and the respect of the hood. I ain't got security. These my brothers that wasn't armed security guard. It was armed found goons. In the words of Frankie, baby, art shit, pop shit. You play with this shit. Allegedly, Rollo was the biggest drug dealer in his city, rivaling that of old figures like Big Meech. It was dudes like I looked up to, like Frank Lucas, um, the honorable Big Meech, and other people of that caliber that I looked up to in life. Rollo became like the hood hero taking care of his people and sharing the Muslim faith. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar.
In his community, he owned five houses and 26 apartment units. Okay, so do you own your whole block? Yeah, 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 exactly. So every house on your block? Nah, you know. I say I own five houses and I own 26 apartment units. The most notable is Lil' Pakistan, where everybody lived as one. I mean, he took care of the whole hood. No bills, nothing to worry about. But then what we doing over here in Pakistan, man, you know we changing lives over here, man. You can down there call this a homeless shelter if you want to, because all my ain't getting but me. All the clothes they wear, I buy their clothes, all the cars they drive, my cars. Everything they sleep on, man, we all we got. I'm Pablo Escobar. Do they basically live rent free and you just yeah. own the whole place? Yeah, everybody live rent free. I bought everybody cars and stuff like that. I bought everybody everything. And every show I make sure everybody get their little percentage or whatnot. And you know, we just living like that, dog. Rollo made millions as a kingpin. He had the house, the cars, the private jets. So much money you couldn't even count it. But that wealth came at a hefty price. Rollo survived multiple shots. Yeah, I've been shot a couple times. I got shot right here in my leg, and I got shot right here in my leg. I got shot. I got shot a couple times. And was known as a street dude to the system. In fact, in just four years, Rollo had been the juvenile a record 32 times until he had just had to get a taste of adult prison. I went, I went juvenile 32 times. 32 times total in your life. So I mean, okay, from 12. The life was all he knew. It raised him. It was in his blood. No one was there to teach him or show him any better. But with age comes wisdom. And when your freedom hangs in the balance, maturity kicks into overdrive. Rollo had to make a decision. Continue selling dope and banging on the ops until he lost his freedom or pour all his energy into music and use his experiences to capitalize on the industry. Luckily, he made the right choice. I keep that dog food like a Rollo. Capitalize off shooting all these people. Capitalize off of going to prison, capitalize off all the many things I have been through and rap about it and tell it a story because now it has became motivation for others. But it took everything in me. It took everything in me to leave the bluff and suck some alone, you know, like that's home, you know. He signed the Gucci main and artist signed to Gucci's new label? Yeah, I was number one. The first artist they ever signed to him. With the backing of the big names like Future and Young Thug, who he previously had beef with and tried to murk, Rollo took off. And you even admitted to like shooting at Young Thug. Oh yeah, that, yeah, I admitted to the shooting at Young. But life is never really that simple for the trenches, is it? Rollo made the right decision, but it was a little too late. The feds were hot on his trail and popping up to catch him slipping at any moment. Why she walking out? Shondell. I need you. Everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. The usual, right? Big fan of dogs. They finally caught him and his crew lacking on December 22nd, 2017, after they came off a return flight to Fulton County Airport at about 5 a.m. Authorities intersected their vehicle. However, Rollo wasn't in that one. Instead, they got three of his crew and they linked him through their drip. Their fit was all fam going wear, which is what Rollo and his people stand on as a team besides their fam America label and movement. Fam goon! Have to stand for life, Dean of that. We in this shit forever, man. We ain't gonna never leave this shit. We gonna die in this shit for real. Hot yeah. shit, pop shit for yeah. real. We ain't gonna know what. Fam, go! Yeah, fam, going for life, man. Squad sign, man. It's real, man. On Fan America's website, Rollo describes it as a music movement and community foundation, once known as an Atlanta gang. His manager, who is Shardy Lowe's sister, and his homies all back the storyline that Famerica is a label doing legitimate business. What is Famerica? Famerica is the record label that Rollo started. Um, he started that so that he'll be able to sign artists, he signed himself, and put out his own music. The feds, however, have it labeled as a criminal street gang to which Rollo is the leader of, and the alleged gang members refer to themselves as Fam Goon. Rollo was being targeted as a kingpin and gangster running the biggest criminal enterprise in Atlanta, and the arrest of his homies Cop sees 520 pounds of dope, estimated to be approximately worth about one mil on the street. The very next day, Rollo made this post saying, I've lost more than a man have gained in a lifetime. Have you ever lost a million dollars at one time? 
that was a bad move. Cops couldn't wait to tie him in with the seizure using the post. To top it off, feds not only took record of this, but other IG posts that show him entering the same jet that day along with the same whips. Little did Rollo know at the time the feds would soon walk down on his jet again. That day came on April 15, 2018. Rollo was apprehended after touching down at the DeKalb Peachtree Airport in Georgia. Feds intercepted their flight and were waiting, arresting him and eight more of his crew after finding 17 packages of ganja with an estimated street value of approximately 840,000. On January 20 of 2018, just a few months before, Rollo posted to his IG saying this, thinking that he got away making millions from the smuggling game to now living a clean life. The feds played the Uno reverse and charged him with conspiracy to possess with the intent to distribute at least a kilo of dope, felony possession of a firearm, and money laundering after agencies swarmed Lil Pakistan right in the apartment complex. Feds hit the ultimate lick, threatening to take everything from his guns to money to property to his nine whips. But a new indictment handed down against the rapper, whose real name is Terrell Davis, says this building was part of his empire. Prosecutors say undercover agents bought guns inside the apartment building. That's why they're considering confiscating it, along with five other homes and nine of Rollo's cars, including those yellow sports cars he often had on display. Rollo's reign was in jeopardy, and yet again he was behind bars fighting for his freedom. For about a year, Rollo was detained for his crimes while awaiting trial. However, in April 2019, a new petition to President Biden to pardon Rollo sparked some chatter among fans and the industry. On July 6, 2020, fans were in an uproar at news that the West End Atlanta rapper was granted bond in the sum of 250k and would be home soon. In order for his release to be greenlit, he had to adhere to the highlighted conditions. Nearing his release, his bond was unfortunately revoked after he was deemed a danger to the community with findings of him allegedly still running his empire from behind bars, along with the string of other evidence. It's a real life crime drama. Famous Atlanta rapper Rollo is just minutes from being released on bail when shocking new evidence keeps him behind bars. Evidence that prosecutors say shows the rapper is still running an empire from behind bars. Rollo was apparently arranging deals while behind bars using an Apple Watch. The feds weren't letting up. They released evidence proving at the time of his arrest, Rollo was in possession of an illegal firearm after they connected his fingerprints to a 380 caliber ammunition they found when raiding his home. They even reported that Rollo was communicating with his baby moms to further his distribution activity while behind bars. Law officials obtained handwritten documents seized from a purse that belongs to old girl while showed coded messages about money, moving weight, distribution, package prices, damn near how to run and maintain a business while he's locked. Sadly, only when Rollo was behind bars, he realized the consequences of his actions. Terrell Davis, who goes by Rollo, says something isn't right about his arrest. Although he can't talk about critical details in the case since it's an ongoing federal investigation, he talked about how social media has played a role in the case. They let me know that social media is probably one of the strongest things in our lives right now. Prosecutors are using his social media posts and captions against him, something his attorneys argue is just for entertainment. And I realized how big I was and how powerful I was. And like, I had to know whatever I say, they're gonna follow me and people gonna take it in. Three years passed and Rollo was still behind bars fighting to be free in 2021 while applying pressure on anyone trying to disrespect. My what? I don't know, why the hell you gonna make me do that? Man, get them niggas locked down. I, mean, I was in the midst of something. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga crazy. <laughs> no, nah, man, no. Nah. Chasing that crack, ain't it? You just see that crack, right crack? Oh man, cut it out. <laughs> In a time where dope was being legalized and corporations were making big bank getting into the business, many agreed he should be free. March 2021, a letter directed to President Biden to free Rollo on these grounds received signatures from governors, customs personnel, Trump associates, and some of hip hop's biggest names, including Drake. Seemed like everybody wanted Rollo free. Unfortunately, Rollo wasn't granted a release. Instead, even more heartbreaking news came from Rollo in jail interviews where he breaks down why he's still locked up and facing football numbers. Prosecutors saying, um, I was asking for a better plea. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, this marijuana John, like, you know, why y'all being so adamant about me doing, you know what I'm 
know so much time in prison. Turns out, Rollo could have been home if he took the plea deal on the table, but doing so would mean his mans and them would stay inside while he's out. And Rollo was way too loyal for that, but to a fault. The worst come to worst, you got 15 months. The worst come to worst, I'm gonna take the plea. But right now, it's <laughs> right now, it's Nah, for real. So you say if you take the plea, you'll still be home in 15 months. Exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah. But yeah. if I take the plea, I would draw my motions. I would draw the fight if I take the plea. Nah. And if I take the plea, the home is going to be gone while I'm still out. You smell me? And I, ain't, I ain't really spelling that. Rollo was on some Bobby Smurda type of time with his mans in them, but the problem was they weren't keeping it 100 with him. Turns out people in his camp were snitching and tipping off the feds, and that's what got him in that position. Exactly. So them niggas was already, them niggas already was telling when I was, everywhere I go, you know how they was kept coming and finding me wherever I was pulling up at. It was the niggas that was with me that was telling them where I was at. No wonder why on the indictment document released by the feds, certain names were blacked out. It was probably those in the camp that had snitched and they were blacked out for protection. Rollo also exposed another crucial factor to his case that has been keeping him in prison. Saying it without saying it, Rollo basically let it be known that certain members of his crew who are responsible for some of the charges being faced, like the pole that was found with them, refused to man up and do the right thing. Instead, they're letting him take the fall with them because they're not taking accountability for their actions. The opportunity that was given to me back in June required it. Required, you know, an individual you know, I ain't never gonna speak about the names or whatnot. Just step up to the plate. And, um, you know, I don't do no, you know, I can't do no snitching or telling them nothing like that. So, it kind of, you know, kind of got me in bondage because, you know, a person don't want to take responsibility for their actions. According to Rollo, if that person mans up and takes their responsibility, the prosecutor has an opportunity on the table to reduce his sentence through a program where he can talk to the youth and use his life to discourage others from that lifestyle. Rollo fought the good fight, but the evidence stacked up against him was obvious. Turns out the feds had video footage, DNA evidence, even phone conversations that they thought they erased but were repaired and they were able to use them. Unlucky for Rollo, his mans never stepped up and on June 1st, 2022, he was sentenced to eight years behind bars. Still, there was some hope because he had already served four years in jail, which they agreed to shave off of his time. He's been also credited with an extra one and a half years for good time, and his team is trying to get him to complete his GED or a RDAP program so he can get another year off his sentence. If all goes well, Rollo could be home within less than a year. It's been one hell of a fight for Rollo behind bars, but he's endured this long and the finish line is within sight. He's since changed his life into a better path and hopes to inspire the next generation to not be like him, but be better. Another mission that I'm trying to accomplish, and that's been one of the most honorable Muslim brothers that I could possibly be. You know, if I look at the Malcolm X movement, I done the Cratils. You know what I mean? One of the biggest drug dealers in the southern region of, you know what I'm saying, the United States of America. I want, I want my kids to remember me and having a great legacy. I just want people to do right. You know what I mean? Obey the laws of the land. You know what I mean? That's what the Quran tell the Muslim to do, dog. Obey the laws of the land. So there you have it. Thanks for kicking it with your boy. Appreciate the love and support. I'll catch y'all when I spin the block for the next vid. And remember, stay smart, stay alert, and stay real. I'm out, y'all.